Let's go on and get started. We have a quorum. And you all receive the minutes. This is license to access. This is license to access. Accepted as written. Thanks for conditioning. Second. Is there a second to the motion? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Let's go on to the health officer report. All right. Uh, <clears throat> our COVID cases are uh, still very low. We're starting to see an uptake in people asking to have uh, home COVID tests. Um, Interestingly enough, our region has the highest level of hospital admissions for COVID-19 in the state. But even at that, it's very low compared to where we were in the nightmarish period of 2020 to 2022. There, most importantly, there have been no new COVID deaths in Wayne County since June. Uh, we've placed our order for the new formulary for COVID-19 and we're waiting delivery. We've been told that both the COVID and the flu vaccines will arrive before October 1st. October 1st is considered the beginning of flu season. I don't know who sets that day, because I was hoping it was October 2nd, <laughs> <laughs> extra 24 hours of, of grace, but you know, it's the first. It's firm. <laughs> we've, already, uh, we've already begun to schedule outreach, outreach clinics in the community. Our commissioners opted in for the Indiana Health First funding on August the 23rd, and uh, the council re <coughs> approved the revised budgets for the funds in our meeting last night. We got um, an extra $30,000 because six counties did not opt in to Indiana First, so the money they would have gotten was allocated to the other 86 counties, so that was an additional 30000 so our final amount allocated to Wayne County for 2024 is $803,101.48. Questions or comments? I would tell you, we, we are hearing that uh, this round of COVID is staying upper respiratory, so um, usually starts out with a really bad headache and then um, severe sinus congestion. Then they get a really bad runny nose and sneezing. Um, and some earaches are being associated to it. So that's how it's uh, far less people are reporting uh, the loss of taste and smell uh, than in the first uh, few, a couple of years of it, like somewhere around 60% reported the loss of taste and smell, and now fewer than 30% are, re are reporting the loss of taste and smell. It still does happen with COVID, but it's, it's far less uh, um, prevalent in this current strain, the XBB 1.1.5. Steve, do we know if uh, we will have COVID tests available to the public, and if so, will they be without charge, will they be charge, or do we we still do not plan to do the COVID testing, but we are still planning to continue to provide home tests for no charge uh, for people. And we still continue to uh, uh, provide free mask. And the recommendation is if you do test positive uh, on, on your home test to for five, five days, wear your mask, as long as your symptoms have included or have improved, um, at that point, then you can come out of your quarantine, but then continue to wear a mask. When you're in a congested situation, you go into the grocery store, um, you're somewhere where there's a gathering, a lot of people go ahead and, and continue to wear a mask for an additional um, five days. So that, that really hasn't changed since um, the beginning of it. Do they still think the home tests are valid against the new strain? Yes. I did read one where they said is is the test or starting to go, you know the test we people got from the government earlier as they pass their expiration date they may be good beyond that but the line may be fainter. Right. So right. they recommended using a really 
Yeah, they've ex they've extended the um, the the expiration of the home test, even the ones that were passing out. Um, for a year past that expiration. So we still have quite quite a few tests, and we encourage anyone that to, to be prepared for it. You know, go ahead and, and, you know, take two or three tests home because when I had COVID, I had to test three times before it picked up. I knew I had it because I had a pounding headache, and, uh, you know, I just had all, all of the symptoms. I'd lost my uh, sense of taste and smell. But it, it took three times of me testing over two days uh, before it finally picked up and it was a faint line. But even a faint line is positive. So we want people to have the test at home before they have it. So just for preparation for the season, you may never use them. There's no charge for them. Just have a couple of tests at home. And I read where they think that we may have another combination flu, COVID, or SV season. Yeah. I've, the states reporting the flu season this year is going to be particularly a rough flu season, and they do encourage everyone to get the flu shot because if you look at, at it always hits Europe before it hits us, and they're having a very hard flu season. And so they encourage everyone as soon as you can to get your flu shot. Don't wait until, you know, December or January to get your flu shot to get it as the flu season starts because it's it's going to be a rough season. Do we have the flu shot here? Not yet. We've ordered it. Yeah. We, we've it's supposed it. to be here by October the 1st. Which is the start of flu not season. Second. Which is the start of flu season. <laughs> not before. Not, 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 not October before. 2nd, John. Any other comments? The executive director report. Okay. Um, I didn't give everybody a copy of it, but before you, you have um, the uh, you have two budgets before you. One of them is through the emergency preparedness budget, and um, that we've already received permission for that. Uh, by the commissioners, and then so I just needed approval on that budget from the board. We've had this this grant for several several years, probably 20, 20 years. This all came out of the nine eleven events. These uh, fundings for um, emergency preparedness in the counties. Is there any significant change in that budget or what we've done? Um, we, we have asked uh, for a drone in that, and that is from our experience with the fire, um, that it would have been very helpful, not just for us, but for EMS to have a drone. So this would be a share of resources between the health department and EMS to have that to where uh, we didn't have to rely on the EPA drone, we could have been able to do surveillance at a safe distance um, for you know our staff and and uh, the citizens, and then also follow creeks and and things like that. So that was why we were like, man, it would have been really handy for us to have had a drone that we could have used this. And then thinking more about it, um, the dangers to our staff when there's an overturned semi. Um, instead of our staff having to, to be right out there in the midst of the wreck, down in ditches, trying to ascertain, you know, what is in that load. Is there any salvageable foods? We can just fly the drone down there. And so it really is a safety issue for our employees and a tool that can be utilized widely. What's the total number on that budget? It's twenty five thousand. It's just a flat twenty five thousand every year we get. That's, we the, get. that's the total budget. Yeah. Will the drone be housed with the EMS or with the health department? It'll be housed with us. Is there a motion to approve? 
So moved. Second. Is there somebody that has the expertise for flying that drone? I don't know how much expertise is involved. There, there are some drone courses, and I was going to have uh, Luke Room Snyder go through that. Um, because there is an art to flying a drone, and you know we don't want to spend money on a drone to have it crashed. Um, so there, there's there's courses that you can go through that will help you learn how to fly a drone. Not all of us are have that ability to fly it. I tried to fly my son's drone one time, and he quickly took the controls from me because I couldn't do it. Um, but you know, younger people have always had those things and, and they take to it like a duck to water uh, but we will make sure that someone is um, trained before they can fly it not only you know for protection of the equipment but to have to try to alle alleviate any liability from the county should be crashing into you know someone's window and break a window any other comments or questions we have a motion on the floor all in favor Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, the next thing is a financial report that uh, you got, you had asked for, and so we had Brittany go over 1159, but I'm going to turn that over to Bob to do since he worked closely with her. Yeah, uh, very basically this report is, tells us where we were in August uh, and where we are today, which we'll give next month. Began the year with $136,000. We've received $207,000. Uh, we've expended four seventeen. dollars You can see that as of August, we were seventy, almost $74,000 in the red. In August, the board approved, the council approved a $500,000 transfer to the health department. Wasn't posted in August. It will be posted in September, and we will end the year with a positive six, eight, ten, twelve thousand to put dollars, depending on the miscellaneous revenue that we get uh, between now and December thirty-first. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the Indiana Health Information Exchange contract. Um, I, I provided a copy of that to Ron, but that is in the um, Health First um, Indiana grant for us to subscribe to this. This will allow us to um, access their information. And so almost every hospital in Indiana is in this exchange a lot of uh, ambulatory services and um, uh, behavior health are in there so when we're doing our femur which is the fetal infant mortality review or our SOFR, which is the suicide and overdose uh, fatality review we'll be able to access those medical records a lot easier than trying to chase down where they at this hospital, did they go to this hospital, um, we'll just be able to look on this exchange and do that. The rates are based on um, the number of providers that we have, so it's a, a pretty low subscription uh, fee. It's, I think, $1,200 a year for us to subscribe to this and would be incredibly helpful. Now, particularly as we're now being challenged to review certain aspects of cases, it'll be quite helpful. As opposed to mailing off requests and, and such, it should be a big improvement. Uh, yeah. It's it's fifteen hundred dollars a year, um, and and that's in the budget that you you see for the Health First Indiana funds. Uh, I just need permission from the board so long as it passes the sniff test with our attorney that we go ahead and sign that contract and, and get subscribed. Other questions? Any other comments? Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 
motion passed. Okay. And then the final thing that I have for you is the the final um, funding amount and budget for the Indiana Health First Fund. Um, Dr. Jetmore explained that the first budget that you approved was for that minimum minimum amount that we would get um, when all the dust settled and all the counties had opted in that we're going to opt in. Our funding um, increased just a little bit um, to just over $29,000. And um, we are doing the, the Indiana Health Exchange is one of the fees. Uh, digital file storage is where the bulk of the money went to. We would like to start working um, to get our files digitized um, so we're not working on the paper files anymore. This would not only be a benefit to us, but it would be a benefit to the public because we could make it um, open facing where they could search for records. They couldn't manipulate the records, but they could see the records uh, that we have, for example, for, for septic systems, um, if we do a, a digitalization of that. The other thing that we have um, new on that is the hidden in plain sight trailer. That's something that I envision uh, being in the um, having a, a big back to school uh, fair where we bring all of the partners together instead of someone doing a little here, someone doing a little here, we have one big one and we do free uh, uh, sports physicals at this and you know, the backpacks for kids and we're doing um, immunizations. But this hidden in plain sight trailer is, is incredibly interesting. It's set up just like a, a kid's room, like a teenager's room. Parents walk through that room, and then a facilitator takes them back through that room and shows them where all of the things are that are hidden in plain sight that may indicate that your child is uh, starting to experiment in drugs or are using drugs that are smoking or they're vaping. And so it's, it's a very incredibly interesting uh, trailer, and we would love to get that for a back-to-school. Um, it's geared for parents' um, knowledge so they can find, they can maybe see the signs and help their child before they get too far down the road. Is that something you lease or rent on? It, it's something that we would contract. They would bring it to our fair. So it's a service. It's a that, service that yeah. you can contract. You're yeah. not buying a trailer here. Yeah, it, we, we would not service. be building one. It's we rent it basically, and they, it comes with them and the facilitators. And how much is that? It is $1,200. Use it how many times? That's a one-time. One-time use. One-time use. That's why I wanted, would like to bring it to a big event, like a, a back-to-school um, event where, you know, I, I think that if we could offer free uh, sports physicals, we would really get a big draw. Um, from parents of, of school age kids, you know, that's, that's something that's just the extra cost, the extra doctor visit, you know, to get that. We could um, ask for residents, you know, from the hospital to donate services, uh, Meridian, um, the neighborhood center, um, our uh, PA would be doing, you know, free sports physicals. And so I think that, that would be a big draw. Other counties um, did that last year. And they saw a really big turnout, you know, when they were offering the free sports physicals. Now, typically, Reed offers that, free sports physicals. So you may want to get them coordinate with them. Yeah, we were, we were going to coordinate with, with Reed. But we, we would like it to be in coordination also with, with other things like the backpack for kids program. Right, but I would work with Reed could... because they, been do, they do it every year. Yeah. So it's... Uh, they may have done it for this year, so you're talking about next year. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm talking for the 24-25 school year. But yeah, I, I definitely will be working with Reed to partner on that. Is this the final budget? As far that, as that is the final budget. You will notice um, we did move. Um, we had under other services... Uh, positions and title, we had all of those contracted. Uh, we were asked to move that into the orange section of the budget, which you can't see, 
is the other services and charges. We put that under professional services. So there was no mistake that these are not county employees, these are contracted employees. Number two, so is this, I know how to visually track it, uh, four, new, four employees, two transferred from a fund that's going away, is that correct? And two new employees. It's one new employee. Okay, one new employee and two that are transitioning, or three that are transitioning in. Okay. So the, the three that you see, there's a medical assistant, the public health nurse, and the bookkeeper were being paid out of the grant or the funding so that this replaces. That's even better than I thought. So anybody who thinks that we're adding four FTE, we're not. We're adding one FTE. One FTE. Thank you for clarifying. And, and the other ones, we're just moving from the fund that this takes the place of. Thank you. Okay, and this budget's already been passed by the commissioners and the council. Yes. Is revised. As revised. This exact budget was presented last night. I have to have it into the state by the 25th, and we didn't get our totals until um, August 8th. And at first they said it would be October 1, and then they said, no, we want these in by September 25th, which they told us that. Um, at the end of last week, and I'm like, you guys are really making it difficult for us to, to get through. I said, you know, I'm going to have to push to get on agendas, and they're like, well, you can just present whatever you want, and then send us the revised one. I'm like, I don't feel comfortable doing that, so luckily I was able to get on the agenda, and we'll be able to present a final budget that we won't have to do any revisions to. Questions, comments? And we're not projected to end up in the red. Entertain a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Thank you. I will get that um, submitted into the state quarter today. That is all that I have. I don't have any, if there's any old business. business. Okay. Any comments from the public? Announcements or comments? Next meeting is October 19th, uh, 2023. Um, if you want to skip a meeting, I think that, that would be a good month to, to take off um, if you're interested in, in doing that. We were, uh, had talked about meeting quarterly, but as the new public health fund came, we decided we needed to, to stay intact. But uh, want to continue to meet monthly, that'd be fine, but October would be a good month to take off if that's when you want to take off. So it's 11.59, have all budgets been passed? They, they had workshop last night. I haven't received the final budget from the council. That would be the only reason the budget season where we have the budget process. Other than that, Say we would we have to do. Is it easier to call a meeting or to cancel the meeting? Probably easier to cancel the meeting. And we can meet in October and, and I can present to you the 1159 budget and then you can take November off. Well, if it's passed, we've already passed the budget. I, we, we need other people to pass the budget. <laughs> 
Well, we, yeah, we have. You, you guys approved the 1159 budget, and it's just working through their, their workshop, and they have made some adjustments um, to the budget. I do know that, but I just have not seen the final um, budget that's been passed by the council. So let's meet in October. Okay. I'll be here. <laughs> well, it's something, if something comes up, we can always call on me. Mm -hmm. Urgent. So next meeting would be uh, looks to me like November sixteenth. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you.